In this video, we're going to go through a CFA level one style question on the impairment of long lived assets under IFRS. And this is, in fact, part one of what is essentially a two part question where the next follow up video is going to be based on the same scenario, but asking for the result in accordance with US GAAP. Let me just say that impairment of long lived or non current assets is a highly technical topic, which, however, at the end of the day comes down to a pretty simple computation. Unfortunately, many candidates fail to grasp the logic behind it, which is a shame because it's not really all that difficult. So if this is something you want to get right in the exam, keep watching and let's get solving. So this is the question that I want you to have a go at. An analyst at Cosinda Enterprises, a company reporting under IFRS, has gathered the following information about a group of assets which are collectively tested for impairment. And we are shown the carrying amount, fair value or estimated selling price, selling costs, as well as the present value of expected future cash flows which have been discounted and the total value of expected future cash flows which are undiscounted. And the actual question is, what will be the impairment loss recognized in Cosinda's income statement? 8.5 million, 2 million or 7 million euro. Let's start by explaining that testing an asset for impairment is all about trying to figure out whether its carrying amount is not overstated. In other words, whether the value at which the asset is carried or presented in the balance sheet is not too high relative to the benefits which that asset may generate for the company in the future. Now, under IFRS, this comes down to a comparison between the asset's carrying amount and something called the recoverable amount. Now, the scenario gives this as 35 million euro. Uh, now, the second term is not provided. We will need to calculate it. But let me tell you that it is meant to represent the economic benefits which we may expect to recover from the asset. And the idea is that if a comparison of these figures reveals that the carrying amount is higher than the recoverable amount, we've got an asset which is, in fact, impaired. Implying that its book value, the carrying amount, needs to be reduced or written down. So, how do we go about computing the recoverable amount. Well, under IFRS, this is the higher of two values. Now, the first of these is fair value, less costs to sell. And the second one is something called value in use. Let's start with this one. In other words, how much could we expect to receive if the asset were sold minus any costs necessary to make that sale possible, such as legal or transaction fees, for example. Now, the scenario tells us that the asset could be sold for an estimated 28 million euro with associated selling costs of 1.5 million. So that's 28 minus 1.5 or 26 and a half million. How about value in use? Well, this is defined as the present value of future cash flows expected from the continuing use of the asset. Let's jot this down. PV, present value of expected future cash flows. 
And because the vast majority of assets don't actually generate cash flows on their own, we typically conduct this analysis at the level of groups of assets, which is also the case in this question. It talks about a group of assets which are tested for impairment collectively. Okay, so what's this number going to be? Let's go back to the question. We are obviously looking for the present value, so definitely the discounted figure. So here it is, 33 million euro. As I pointed out before, we need to identify the higher of these two, and that's value in use. So 33 million becomes our estimate of the recoverable amount. And when we now contrast this against the carrying amount, we conclude that the asset is indeed impaired. The carrying amount is higher than recoverable amount. In other words, the book value is too high relative to the benefits which this asset is expected to generate in the future. Accordingly, the carrying amount needs to be reduced or written down from 35 to 33 million, so by 2 million euro, which is going to hit the income statement as an impairment loss. And if we now check the possible answers to this question, we see that this result corresponds with answer B.